All right, guys. See the Holland again. Holland Breaks. HollandBreakStore1.com. I think tonight I want to post up a bunch of cars for sale, some box breaks. I can't use eBay, so if you want to do any box breaks with basketball, football, or baseball, just get a hold of me on there. You can buy them on there. If not, you can email me at hollandbreaks at gmail.com. But, anyways, looks like my connection might be okay. So... Today we're opening the Walking Dead AMC Season 7 trading card. Let's get into it, eh? Uh, I don't have a knife, but there's a really... Yeah, buddy. Let's cut that off. The Walking Dead. Put these things over here in the battle. Oops. There's a razor. Let's get that razor. I don't want to cut myself again. There we go. I don't want to do that. I'll open the box up. You know what I'm saying? The Walking Dead. I love it. I got so many, like, relics and autographs and all of that starting up. I want to have an autograph from everybody. If I can get an autograph from every single person from The Walking Dead. Oh my god, that'd be insane. On her own terms, Sasha. On her own terms, Sasha begged Eugene for a type of weapon he could find to help kill herself, but secretly in hope would bring something she could use to kill Negan. But when he brings her the poison pill he made instead, Sasha must make, Sasha must make an important decision regarding how best to help her friends. And we got here bonding. Maggie and Jesus have found <laughs> Let's redo that Maggie and Jesus have formed a bond Since she arrived at Hilltop As they sat on the steps of his trailer to talk Jesus explained that during his childhood Living in a group home He got used to being around lots of people But found it difficult to get close to anyone Until Sasha and Maggie came along He feels like his efforts to interrogate them Into a community finally made him feel Like part Of it as well Integrate. That's why, that's why I messed it all up. The manipulator. Dwight. Dwight knows Negan would never stop looking for Sherry if he knew that she let Daryl go. So he devises a plan to help her one last time. He plants a signature. He plants a signature of her goodbye note in the doctor's office and tells Negan he got the whole story out of her before she was eaten alive. Dwight claims it was the doctor who let Daryl go in order to get close to Sherry and that she only ran out of fear. Just visiting. I don't fucking need numbered cards up in here. Even though Carol wishes to be left alone, Ezekiel cannot resist traveling out to check on her. He brings her members of the kingdom to clear any walker from the area around her home, but in the process they trip some of her wires, alerting her to their presence. Ezekiel respects that Carol's Ezekiel's respect for Carol is clear and as Jerry Jerry's when he is present her with the cobbler. He presented her with a cobbler that he brought just in case and she opened the door. Man, I gotta warm up. I gotta warm up. Let me get a little drink. Can't read right now. Mmm. Once inside the kingdom, the group is surprised to see Morgan living within the community. Rick and Daryl immediately ask about Carol's whereabouts. Morgan tells them that he found Carol shot and injured and helped bring her to the kingdom where she was treated, keeping his promise to Carol not to tell anyone where she was living. Morgan only tells them that she was there and then she left. Shenanigans. With a barbed wire around it. When the savers come to take the doctor, Gregory asks to speak to Simon privately. Simon conveys his concern that if he is unstable or unable to hang into the trust of the people, someone else who isn't a cooperative might come along and take over. Simon gives Gregory the address of the compound and assures him he will take care of any problems as long as there are no shenanigans. I don't want shenanigans. 
All right, what do we got here? This one's like a rusty one. It's got barbed wire with rust. Plausible deniability. Gregory is furious over the botch plan to eliminate the saviors. He is ranged that he is angered that Glenn and Abram have been buried in their community and that Maggie and Sasha are still there. Gregory Gregory's only concern is that the Sabres will show up and realize that the Hilltop conspired with Rick to kill them. And that he will have to pay the price for it. Got rust on it. And of course, rivalries. I've already read this one before. So let's put that. You guys can read that. I think. Hold on. I put moving around. So it's obviously I gotta move it you now. Everything's mirrored when you're uh, just live streaming on a webcam. Mm -hmm. So I got apps for that. This first app, I'm gonna I'm gonna sneak down here. I like to. I'm gonna just gonna take the bottom pack out and open that one first. Yeah, that's the bottom pack. See if there's any relics or anything in there. The chop card. We got bonding again. The manipulator again. First pack to the last pack. Oh my gosh, just visiting. Is this going to be a repeat? Most of the truth. Is this a repeat? Oh my god, they gave me the exact same pack except that one. I'm going to kill you. That's crazy. For a second time, Rick finds himself and his son in their, on their knees and at the mercy of Negan's brutal methods of control. But instead of shaking in fear, Rick has built it. Build his. Rick has built his resolve to fight. That's weird. And beyond, the one who wins with this war, even though he knows Negan intends to beat Carol to death with Lucille and smash Rick's hands, Rick swears that nothing will change the fact that he is going to kill Negan. And I killed that paragraph. Ugh. Wheel of Misfortune. Rusty barbed wire. Rick and Michonne split up the walkers at the carnival to make them easier to kill. Rick leads his group to the Ferris wheel, but before he is done, he notices a deer promised to Michonne grazing nearby. He climbs up the Ferris wheel to get a better shot, but just as he realizes the walkers will get to the deer first, the bar snaps. Rick falls, and he is suddenly in just much danger as the deer. Damn. Rick. We got Dwight Chop card. The Dwight Chop. Chop 8. Let's go. First and last pack. Let's kind of stick up right. Next pack. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Go in the background, non copyrighted, so they can't copyright me. So oh, no, I'm copyrighting these. Some sort of commercial. Non copyrighted music. Alright, guys, let's get this going. It's flat. Dwight was sent out to look for one of the saviors that dread, dared to escape Nikon's compound. Along the way, he came across a gruesome car wreck with several walkers named on the road. As he weaved through the mangled bodies, more fell from the overpass above, nearly landing on him. He struggles with one until he's finally able to shoot and escape. Meeting the king. Carol wakens with her injuries bandaged, and Morgan is waiting by her bedside. He then takes her to meet a man who runs the kingdom. Ezekiel is an eccentric but kind man whose theatrical way of speaking, combined with his pet tiger Shiva, creates an air of mythology that he uses to keep his community running smoothly. Carol immediately takes on a personality and feels it will suit the situation. Boom. Slave labor. 
All right, I'm gonna hit. Get out. Yeah. Carl snuck into the back of a supply truck heading to the Savior compound. Once it arrived, he began shooting in the hopes of eliminating Negan. But once the plan failed, he found himself in the mercy of Negan's psychotic limbs. Psychotic limbs. Out of his cell, he is forced to work as a walker in the walker yard. Daryl can only watch helplessly as Negan teases and toys with the decision of Carl's fate. Yeah. Merciful lies. If you guys like death metal, I'm on SoundCloud. Ethan Holland on SoundCloud. I make death metal. It's all me, though, all of it. Carol explains to Daryl that she left Alexander because while she knows she could fight the saviors and would be successful in killing them, she is weary and feels like the more she kills people, the more she dies herself. She tearfully asks Daryl if the saviors came and if everyone is okay. Daryl, sparing her feelings, lies to Carol by telling her they made a deal and no one was harmed. You know, a lot of people died with that, man. I ain't lying. A lot of people died. That's a bad lie, man. How are you gonna get yourself out of that one? Turns out the day. Michonne drops her katana when she believes Rick has beaten, been eaten alive. The walkers turn to her as they approach. All she can do is stare at the dairy remains she believes to be her beloved Rick. Suddenly, Rick bursts out of the box where she was hiding, where he was hiding. Tosses her katana to her, and then they fight alongside each other. Once they finish off the walkers, they embrace, relieved. They have survived. Hot cars. Rosita and Sasha are looking for a car to drive Negan's compound when they come up across a used car lot, but they must deal with the walkers that are wandering inside fenced in lot in the lot before they can find one that will work. They bust out a car window and pour gasoline into it and light on a fire to distract the walkers while they climb the fence and the hot wire one the other cars. God damn. I love it. Brief moment of happiness. Rusty. It's got the rust on it. On the way to the hilltop, Carl makes a surprise and find a bag of roller skates. The two had been discussing the recent horrific events of their lives and the uncertainty that that lay ahead of them. The roller skates are not only past their journey to the hilltop, but a much needed moment of happiness for the teens. I got her autograph too. Rivalries. I've already read that one before, so I'm not reading that movie. I've read that one too many times again. Too many times again. Man, I got so many packs left. What am I going to do? I just smoke cigarettes and cigarettes and cigarettes and cigarettes. Where is... Hold on, give me one second. It's got to be here. I think I'm always looking for it. It's gone anyway. Hmm. Hopeless. Hold on. Give me a sec here. Let's have to use that. That's weird. Everything. I always think I got everything ready, and then I don't. You know what I mean? I got a couple more boxes too. I got like this box. I got one of those. That's what I'm talking about. Almost ready. Put that right there. Under Ad, if you go on there, I got mystery packs on there that are pretty pretty sweet they're 30 something bucks and they got a lot of cards they're all hits like they're all either prisms or autographs or numbered cards so i try to hook them up right i sold my first one today i'm sending it out in the morning but i don't know which one he got but i hooked up all the packs really good i made sure it was way worth it to go on there ethol underscore 55 fl 55 and uh, you have to go in there and buy them up because they're, they're a limited time. They're mostly all prisms and 
Oh, is it 2020 or 2019-20? Anyways, back to The Walking Dead. Swear. Beatrice and Kathy take Tara out into the woods under the guise of helping her find her way back to Alexandria. Before long, Tara realizes that they have no intention of keeping their word and plan killing to killing her. So she runs. Beatrice gets Tara at gunpoint, but Cindy tackles her. Cindy agrees t- to let Tara go, but only if she swears never to tell anyone about the settlement. She lied about that. She made Rick come back and take all the guns. Grieving. Sasha takes Maggie to the hilltop grave sites of their beloved Abram and Glenn, and she gives Maggie the pocket watch that was found on Glenn. Maggie Maggie lays the pocket watch on Glenn's grave. The watch had been given to Glenn by Maggie's father, Herschel, before he himself was brutally murdered by the governor. He chopped his head right off. It's like Mortal Kombat style. Go and not go. I, I haven't read this one yet, though. Ezekiel finds Carol as she is sneaking out of the kingdom. He knows that there is more to Carol than meets the eye, and that she sees right through the fairy tale that he has created for the kingdom. While he, admitting it's all a, it's all a facade, jeez, commercials. So admitting it's all a facade, Ezekiel explains how people need someone to follow, and the kingdom gives them something to believe in. Maggie, I will find you. <laughs> I don't think that went too good for him. After witnessing Abram's murder, Daryl lunges to his, lunges and hits Negan, but is quickly taken down. Negan reminds them of his promise that such outbursts will not be tolerated, but instead of killing Daryl, he swings Lucille at Glenn. While staring at the helpless Maggie, Glenn musters his final words, Maggie. I'll find you. That's crazy. That was brutal. I'm gonna sleeve that one because that was a powerful point. That was that was sick. Like I I about threw up. <laughs> I was like, whoa, whoa. All right, bullet maker. What you know about Eugene? I'm not reading that one. You guys can pause it and read it. This is, a, this is a big boy. This is a hobby box. On our own terms. We already read that. Up and up. With the up and up with the rust down it. Chase takes Rick to the top of one of the junk piles. So he may get a view of the intricate hive known as the heaps where the scavengers have lived for a long time <laughs> what before Jadis will agree to help rick fight the saviors she tests him in order to prove his worth he is tossed down the trash pile and forced to fight a terrifying walker covered in armor and spikes on the up and up see they're up there hmm? rivalries same rivalries card r4 Oh, I can feel this one's going to have a hit in it, I bet. It's a numbered card or something. In a shop. I didn't get a shop. I did get a walker, though. I got walker one. That works. I'm going to get a walker. Reunited. I'll let you guys read that. You can pause it and read it. If I do that, just pause it and read it, because that's a lot to read. Dr. Smart Pants. After a few minutes of shaking with fear during Negan's intimidating welcome to the compound, Eugene quickly, quickly shows his worth by sharing his knowledge and ensures survival. Negan is thrilled that when he presents a problem to find a way to keep the yard walkers from falling apart, Eugene easily comes up with a solution. Oh, Eugene. About what happened. After the brutal death of Abram and Glenn, Negan drags Rick into the RV and drives them to the herd of walkers, determined to establish dominance. Negan throws Rick's axe into the crowd of walkers and tells him, get my axe. With visions of, of his friends running through his mind, Rick obeys, knowing, Rick obeys knowing that if he fails, the rest of them will also die. Remember that. Negan's a fucking prick. Lucille. Rick, what you got, Lucille? As Negan sends... 
his saviors through Alexander gathering half of his community supplies, Negan forces Rick to hold Lucille. It is yet another show of force by Negan is making Rick to hold the very instrument that was used only a few days earlier to end the lives of Abram and Glenn as he watched. Negan's goal is to continuously continually wear Rick down and rid him of all thoughts of fighting for his community's freedom. God dang, this is when I got serious. New Negan. Simon and the series ride a hilltop to let Gregory know that Simon will be there. New Negan after the death of the Sabres at the satellite compound. Simon gives Gregory an opportunity to show his work. Gregory, Gregory immediately tries to give up Maggie and Sasha, but Jesus has hidden them in another closet, and Gregory is ready to reveal them. He discovers they are not there, revealing only his private collection of scotch. I'm talking about finding a way to win. Negan's wife watches one of their former husbands' faces of iron. When Negan sends a woman, he finds appealing. Negan sees a woman, he finds it appealing, and forces her husband into a a servitude and her into his den of wives. So he takes over their chicks. Copycat with a rust on it. And then, all right, I always leave my walkers. This must be. Is this really Walker 1? First, let's see. Walker 1. After Carol's tossed from the cart and she is beat in, she begins to hallucinate and sees the walkers that are coming at her, but as versions or as visions of what they would have looked like before their death. Walkers 1. So there wasn't special like green or something because green would be like out of 25 or blue was out of something. Oh yeah, blue's 25, and it's 30, 50. I don't know, man. I'm gonna make cards. I just love the orange on the side. Is that gonna be cool? I'm do the Zeta. Audience. Jesus takes Rick and his group to meet King Ezekiel, and after a moment of surprise at seeing his pet tiger Shiva. They asked the king for his help in fighting the saviors to free all the communities, but King Ezekiel has not told the people of his kingdom about the deal he made with the saviors and does not want to put their lives in danger by asking them to fight. Candlelight dinner. After finding the room supplies, Rick and Michonne have, peacefully, have a peaceful candlelight dinner while they discuss their plans. Michonne asks Rick, how we will reorder the world once Negan is dead. Rick believes that different communities will figure out how to move forward together. But Michonne is admit, adamant they will ever need a leader. Rick says he will be willing to lead, but only if they lead together. You know what I'm saying? All right, beach balls. <laughs> Although Sasha snuck in the compound to kill him, Negan sees the potential in her to become a valuable member of his group. Negan comes to Sasha's cell to make her an offer just in time to stop David from attacking her. Despite David's apologies, Negan decides to stab him in the neck anyway and leaves the corpse in the cell with Sasha so that she may decide her own fate. Reinforcements. Yours. Clean up. Brave with the rust. After the terrifying and torturous moments of Negan choosing who would die in order to pay for the attack on his compound, Negan steps before Abram with his decision made, having ever cowered in the face to death. Abram lifts his head high and Negan approaches. He is brave and defiant as he faces a certain death with the rust on it. Then we got Rosita. I don't even have her card yet. No, dude. Rosita. I didn't see too much of Rosita. C14. Alright, this is that stack over there. We still got a lot of cards right here. I need to get some awesome cards here. Oh, Jesus. Choices. I'm going to start going through these and not reading all of them, you know. Go back. Why'd you go? Let's 
something to tell you. Fugitives. Bury me here. Back to the cell. Back to the cell. The rust on me. Paul Jesus. Zeta, I got Paul Jesus. I don't know if that'll bring along any other cards. Yeah, so what's this video? I'm just gonna only read the really good cards. Which is a lot of text that I'm not gonna read in the Walker Tennis or Walker Hunters. Paying for peace. It's a trap. Kill top heroes. Today and only today. New best friends. After following the clues Gabriel left when he was captured and brought back to the boathouse, Rick and the group are surrounded by the scavengers, a group led by Jadis. Rick sees potential in a large and seemingly skilled community and begins to attempt to convince them to join their fight against the saviors. Just kidding. We are digging. Do what you do. Another walker. I've actually got this walker card. But still. So walker 10. Yep. The group plays vehicles near the entrance to Alexander with the poles and spikes producing out of them so the dead could find their way to the community and impale themselves before reaching the gates to try to claw their way inside. Next pack. I'm going to kill you. I showed that painful piece. It's a trap again. Hilltop Heroes. Today and only today again. New best friends again. Reading a room with the rust on it. Right, my pile's getting too big. I gotta put some of these away. Where are our where's my box? So let's keep it here. Eugene has always struggled with finding his own courage and his desire to be brave. When he is taken hostage by Negan, he sees an opportunity to feel safe within the sanctuary, even though even though we know it means going against the will of his friends. Eugene. I got a good feeling about this pack. Hopefully I'm right. There's another walker. W4. We are Negan again. The wrong victim. What had to be done. Empty shelves. The ones who lived. No guts. Spencer goes to Negan while Rick has gone to tell him what Rick has and Emily try to take over just like he did with his mother. Spencer proposes that Negan get rid of Rick and put him in charge and lead Alexandria. Negan sees Spencer is sneaky and accuses him of being gutless for going back in Rick's back then quickly finds that Spencer has guts after all. Because he sliced him and diced him. You know what I'm saying? Fumbling through. And then another walker. Another walker. Horizontal 
Another walker. Just kidding. Walker, we got here is an option. Looks kind of cool. What we got W4. The courtyard surrounding Negan's compound is the first line of defense against intruders. It is maintained by prisoners who shackle Walker's defenses, concrete blocks, and poles. You know what I'm saying? Next pack. We got here. We got Tara in the back. No trespassing. Building rage. I'm not reading most of these cards because I've already read them before. I want all my videos to be me reading the same thing. Pep talk. So no offense to it. Pep talk. I figure you guys can pause them. I've already read them. If you haven't read them, you guys can read them. Real smart, right? Sometimes you think. Let me in. All right. Negan and the Sabres arrive to take their payment from Alexandria. The Sabres use intimidation and violence to keep each one of the communities that they control under command. They take what they want, continue to demand higher payments, claiming that they provide protection to the communities. However, the walkers aren't nearly as much of a threat as the savers are themselves. Jesus. Pay and respect. What do we got here? Leap. With the rust on it. Negan begins shooting through the roof of the RV, forcing Rick to run and leap off of it. Rick jumps onto a walker, swinging by his neck on the side of a bridge. They dangle together for a moment until the walker's body severs and Rick crashes down on the herd below. Rick must fight his way through the walker's back in the RV in order to complete the task and return the axe to Negan. Jesus. And we got Tara. We got a few of her autographs, I think. Material. Ah, so there's the packs that are more open right, I wonder. Maybe this one has a good card on it. Rivalries. Show us strength. Left alone. Safe place. A good sign. One melon short. Ends the same. Gabriel makes a deal. Oh, yeah. And then rivalries. Negan and David. Negan may find it easy to burn a man's face with a hot iron or beat a man to death with his baseball bat, but he does not. What? But he does have rules. He lives by and some things are absolutely prohibited. When Negan finds David about to attack Sasha in her cell, he doesn't hesitate to stab him in the neck with his knife. Let's see here. Right there, right there, right there. All right. This is halfway through right here. This is a halfway pack. Nothing good yet, but a couple walkers. See a chop card, chop six. Surprise! I've seen this card a bunch of times. Nolan Boyd. A 
while you were out. Terra in the sand. She said Terra in the sand. <laughs> this is Terra. Practice. Ooh, the sun is bright. Look at that. Jeez, a piece of sun's bright. I've already read this a million times. The cell. Dean was determined to break Daryl down and make him bow. Daryl was kept in a dark cell and fed nothing but dog food sandwiches. His only company was a constant sound of a song repeating endlessly that was so overly cheerful that it could drive anyone to madness. Go somewhere else. For Howard. For Rust. Dean's wives briefed Eugene and begged him to make deadly pills in order to help them help the life what help them end the life of one of the wives who wants to kill herself. But Eugene is smart enough and realizes that the wives are tricking him and actually instead use the pills to kill Negan instead. When he refuses to hand over the pills, the wives accuse Eugene of being a coward, which he freely admits is true. Oh, Eugene. Paul Jesus Rovia. Chop. Oh, chop and block. Chop, chop. Oh, swap top. Boom. Next pack. This must be the, the big hitter. The big hitter. It does say two hits per box, one autograph guaranteed. So maybe I'll have a hit autograph, you know? <laughs> you know what? Learning opportunity. The Hunter's Map. Cutting through the horde. Let's tell you about that one. Rick and Michonne lined up those uh, things from car to car, and they had a whole horde in the middle of the median, so they just gunned it with the cars and sawed them all in half. I know that just just watching. Pay attention. Eugene is about to watch Negan's rep reprimands the doctor who is falsely believed helped Daryl escape in order to get closer to Sherry. Even though he is innocent, the doctor begs for his forgiveness to avoid having his face burned by the iron. Negan seems to accept the apology, but then after a smug glance up to Eugene, he grabs the doctor and throws his head first into the fire instead. God damn. You can handle fight. You can handle eight. Sorry, you can handle eight. You can pause that and read that one. I ain't reading that one. A reluctant warrior. There she is. Cheryl. I take the shot. Put the rust on it. Another walker. Gotta see the walkers. Once Daryl's let out of a cell, he was forced to work inside a walker courtyard that surrounds a saber sanctuary. The walkers are chained or placed on spikes where they guard the compound as they slowly rot away. And the W2. The W2 walker. Any other walkers we got in here? We see all these walkers. No other ones. No walkers. Next pack. So he has to have a hit. One of them's got a hit in Abram. Desperation. Trust a bomb. Like minded. Sneaking out. We're supposed to. Plausible deniability. What do we got here? Rust opening negotiations. And then we got Abram. I was looking so sad in his pictures. Between his never ending supply of witty comments and his ability to protect anyone in his vicinity, it was impossible not to love Abram. He came with a group of Rosita and Eugene, but was quickly a vital member of the community, and his death was a loss to them all. Abram. Next pack.
the wrong victim. I've seen that one. What had to be done when they took all the guns. Empty shelves again. The ones who live. Sean returns from her trip and discovers the location of Negan's compound. She finds Rick. She tells him there are more saviors than they are ever imagined, but she knows she can still win. Through everything, the only way they will survive by fighting together as a group. Taking on the saviors will be the toughest battle they have ever faced. Michonne and Admin, that they can win if they fight together. Oh, man. No guts again. No trespassing again. What we got here? Betrayer. Oh, Eugene. And then we got Daryl for the character. Character cards, Walker cards. We got Daryl in my face right there. Even after being held captive and tortured by the saviors, Daryl would never bow to Negan. He felt responsible for Glenn's death, but, but was able to take that pain and focus on fighting for the freedom and survival of his friends. Good job, Daryl. See here. All right, come on, get out of there. It's rivals, man. Building rage again. Uh oh, there's something in this one. This one's got us something in this pack, man. Building rage. Pep talk. Vegan. Negan has instructed Dwight to break Daryl down and make him bow to Negan. He commands Dwight for doing a good job, even though Daryl is a long way from breaking and offers him, offers him a reward. Negan keeps, his, keeps each other with his people in line through fear and intimidation, and even the reward he offers Dwight for his good efforts seems like a trap that could hold another punishment for accepting it. Yeah. Retreat. Look at him. He's about to pop a bam. Shooting that gun. All we got here. Let's see. I'll go rival these first. Negan and David. Which we just got that one. And then look at this. We have Sasha Williams. It's an equal Martin. Green. Martin Green, yeah. Snickle, Martin Green. There's Sasha Williams. Authentic costume relics. So that's part of that gray shirt. And that looks like that gray shirt this time, too. I must wash it, though. Is that smelling? Dun, 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 dun. That's cool. Wait a minute. It has blood splatter or something. It's got mud on it. So it's probably numbered. That's got mud on it. Should be numbered. Oh, it is. Nine of 50. Yep. We've got nine of 50. Let's see that. Congratulations. You have received an authentic AMC's The Walking Dead Season 7 relic card. Sasha Williams shirt. There's only 50 of them in the world with the mud on them. See that mud on the front? That's a good card right there. Who's So far, I got one hit. Good old Sasha. It looks like part of her shirt, too. I got a couple other ones that don't look the same. They're a whole different color than the shirt. I'm wondering what's going on with it still. Waiting room. I got a Tobin, though. One out of five in the world earlier. Fumbling through, there's one out of five of those cards in the whole world. And I got it. Gabriel makes a deal again. Oh, yeah, that was that leaf, but the other one was different color. I remember that. Coward again. What do we got? Double crossed with the rust on it. Oh my god, and then the next pack. We got an autograph. That's an on-card autograph, too. That's real. 
That was an on card. And who is it? Oh my god. Yeah, it was his other partner. It was, uh, what was his name, Ethan, too? My name's Ethan. I think his name was Ethan. Is Ethan's partner? Jordan Woods Robinson is Eric Relay. Eric Relay. Relay. Eric Relay. Authentic autograph, though, man. I can tell that's real. I can tell it's real tech. Straight out the box, right into the sleeve. Two hits, that's probably the two hits, but they put one as an autograph. So, yep, that's a real autograph. Congratulations, you have received an authentic autograph card signed by fan favorite of AMC's The Walking Dead Season 7, Jordan Woods Robinson, is Eric Lay. That's crazy. It's not numbered, though. I do have his autograph. That's pretty neat. All right, and then rivalries. Rick and Negan. I'll read that one. While Rick and Negan are both the leaders of their groups, they each take a very different approach. Oops. Oh, to the role, which <laughs> which instills trust and faith in his abilities of those around him, which makes others want to follow him. But Negan forces his saviors to bow and be submervent, be subservient. Or face his wrath. Sorry, I was looking at something else. My mind wanders. It's a shiny rivalry card, too. R1, rivalry one. God, he's so mad. These are good actors. Seriously, good actors. Let's see if we can get any more hits. It says two hits per box, one autograph guarantee, but sometimes you get lucky and you get even more. That's what's going on with mystery packs on eBay. Ethel 55. Ethel underscore 55. You can find the mystery packs. And they are sweet. Trust me. I definitely get, you get your money's worth. Paying respect again. Show of strength. Left alone. Safe place. The iron. That's where they're burning people's faces. When a member of the Silver community breaks any rule, the faces they face horrific consequences. A man and his wife met in secret, and since Negan claimed his wife as one of his own, that was not allowed. Instead of killing or exiling him, he forced to watch. She, he forced her to watch her husband get the iron. Dwight, who suffered the same fate himself, is in charge of heating the iron so it can inflict more scars. And I got Carol. Oops. Uh, Carol left Aunt Alexandria hoping that solitude would, would prevent her from having to kill anymore. But upon learning of the violent deaths of her friends, she knows she must help Lucy Nine. Okay, what we got? Like three more packs. Hold on, we got like five or six packs left. There'll be three walker. We got a good sign again. One melon short. They break that up. Ends the same. Surprise again. No one void. While you were out again. Out for a drive with a rust on it. And then walkers. Gotta sleep my walkers. Will they turn into talkers? The Sabres led dozens of walkers inside the hilltop as a retribution for the death of their faction at the satellite compound. Maggie wastes no time finding a tractor and running over several of them while Jesus and Sasha take on the rest of hand in combat. Hand in hand combat. All right, 
play action, another play action. What do we got here? Another chop block. I thought that was a thick pack. I thought I was going to get lucky. Terror in the sand again. I should call it Terror in the sand. Right there, there's that card right after it again. With that bright sunshine on the chunk. Jesus. The cell again. I'm getting a lot of repeats in this one. Learning opportunity. The hunter's map. Cutting through the horde. Did that one before. We got a rust. Missing inventory. While emptying the army of all the guns, Arav discovers that there are two weapons missing from the inventory sheet that Olivia was in charge of maintaining. Negan immediately became angry that something was being hidden from him and threatened to kill Olivia if they were not found. Rick is surprised to hear the missing weapons he call and calls a community meeting and begged for them in return. So no, somebody took them. We got Aaron. We got his autograph, too. Actually, I got his autograph. These guys were partners. These guys were partners in the show. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you know what I'm saying. I got an Aaron chop. What we got, guys? We got... Ooh. We're down to the three last packs. I take the shot. Opening negotiations. Double crossed again. Final sunset. Looking for Sherry. Onlooker. Final sunset with the rust on. And then we got Dwight. Dwight. Dwight gave up his wife and his freedom and service to Negan to order to survive. But once Sherry escapes, it decides it's time to fight against him. He surrenders to Rosita his help put together a plan for the communities to win their war against the saviors. All right. Second to the last pack. Ooh, more walkers. Brief moment of happiness. Back into the cell again. Copycat. Brave again. Up, up, up. Wow, that's weird. It's got the same same picture as the other card, but the other card didn't say up, up, up on it. Must have actually maybe it did. Wheel of Misfortune. Looking for Sherry again with the rust. And then walkers. Gotta sleep them walkers, man. Walker 6. The saber is set up a trap full of explosives to catch a horde that could overtake the compound, but Rick and the others find it and steal the explosives. The horde arrives just as they finish removing the explosives, and Rick and Michonne use the cars to run and steal a cable through the horde and slice the walkers in half. Yeah. Last pack, guys. Ooh, I knocked everything off. Let's go boom like that. Quick fix. Yeah, whatever. All over again. Got two walkers up on there. There's a rude looking walker. You know what I'm saying? All right, last pack. I'm out of here. I'll get some more videos on. I'm gonna do some box breaks. I gotta do some work on my uh, website tonight. HollandBreakStore1.com. If you go to that, it'll go right to it. I just gotta add more to it tonight. So if you guys get on there, let me know. Email me at HollandBreakStore or no, email me at HollandBreaks at gmail.com. But this website's HollandBreaksStore1. Dot com H O L L A N D breaks store one dot com. It's got to have the one because I had the other one, but it's shut down right now because I don't even know I haven't on it in so long. It's probably still on. 
but definitely use hollandbreakstore1.com. Out for a drive. Missing inventory. Onlooker, but with the rust. And then I got Michonne for the last card. So it really did only give me two hits, one autograph. Last time I bought, last two times I bought a hobby box, I got an autograph and two numbered cards in it, so. But there's Michonne, Chop. So what Chops did I get? Chop, Dwight Carroll, it's a rivalry. Chop. Chop. So, for my characters, I got Dwight, Carol, Abram, Tara, Eugene, and Jesus, and Rosita. So, my chops, I got Dwight, Dwight chopped, Paul Jesus chopped, I got Aaron chopped, and Michonne chopped. Walkers. Still waiting to get a numbered walker. I want to get some numbered walkers. And then, of course, I got the autograph, on card autograph. And then I got a part of Sasha Williams' shirt. Which is very soft. Put the mud on it. So there's mud on it. So the muds are out of 50. So that's number 9 of 50. So that's pretty sweet. I like it. Alright guys. You guys have a good day. I am going to get ready to eat and go to sleep, and then I will see you in the next one, hopefully. Um, I'll open some different ones up, do a couple of these Walking Deads in the next one. And then I have a bunch of football, baseball, and basketball. I'm going to list those as breaks, so on hollandbreakstore1.com. Little Holland Break Store. All right. Have a good one. Bye-bye.